Here we are, and please welcome Professor Fox. Uh, it's delightful to be here, and I'm going to be giving uh, a talk about uh, an issue that has become uh, really quite divisive and controversial in rural Ontario. Uh, it is arguably one of the most uh, explosive and controversial policy issues to ever uh, come across rural Ontario, at least in my career. Uh, and I've been a student of rural issues since I began my undergraduate program at Guelph uh, in 1973. Uh, and I have never seen in any of my career as a student or as a researcher anything that has quite galvanized local community uh, organization and resistance to a policy quite so much as the topic that I'm going to talk about today uh, with respect to green energy. I am a, a faculty member in what's called the Department of Food, Agricultural and Resource Economics at the University of Guelph. This is an academic department within the Agricultural College. The Agricultural College is one of the oldest colleges, one of the founding colleges at the University of Guelph. Our department, in fact, celebrated its 100th anniversary in 2007. We've had several different names. Our most recent name is the Department of Food, Agricultural, uh, and Resource Economics. We do teaching and we do research uh, in applied economics related to issues connected somehow with food, uh, agriculture, natural resources, uh, and also development. Uh, so we have a number of international graduate students and our faculty involved in a number of development related projects. So once upon a time, rural Ontario was this peaceful, scenic place with farm fields and woodlots and babbling brooks and streams, uh, but in some respects sort of a boring uh, place maybe. Uh, but over the last few years that has uh, changed, as my personal story is an indication, and protest movements have emerged right across the province that pit rural residents against what? This. Or this. And I'm sure you've seen some of those as you've traveled around the countryside. Uh, and you may have seen some of these. And I'm not talking about the campgrounds, or I'm not talking about the retirement community. I'm talking about the, the sign uh, near the bottom, stop the wind turbines, everyone loses. Uh, and there are lots of signs like this popping up around the province of Ontario over the last uh, couple of years or, uh, or so. Really, things got kicked off in a big way with what was called the Green uh, Energy and Green Economy Act, which was introduced to the Ontario Legislature in February 2009. Okay, so that's only uh, two years ago. Uh, and it was passed uh, into law in May uh, 2009. However, it's the culmination of uh, a policy development process that dates at least back to 2003. Uh, and in fact, there were uh, efforts to restructure and reorganize electricity production, consumption, and distribution in Ontario that uh, go back to the end of the, uh, uh, of the 20th century. Where do we go from here? What are the implications? What are the alternatives? Uh, and, but, but let me just start with an implication that uh, is that it appears that the economic model underlying the Green Energy and Green Economy Act is not sustainable. Okay? Had high ideals, uh, but we're very quickly going to face uh, a problem of who's going to pay for the higher projected uh, electricity costs. Uh, and there are two main candidates, taxpayers uh, or ratepayers or electricity consumers. Uh, will the financial pressures lead to policy change or financial and political pressures? We've already seen a reversal on the proposed Oakville uh, natural gas uh, plant, which was uh, canceled recently. Uh, and uh, I believe it was last week the province announced a moratorium on offshore wind uh, development uh, in, the, uh, in the province. Um, but uh, if that's the case, if there is a reversal policy, uh, this is how stranded assets get created. Right? Uh, and so now there's a huge lawsuit because the contracts were signed on the Oakville plant. And so there's a multi-million dollar lawsuit uh, to recover the losses of uh, uh, that uh, the uh, people who signed the contract are, uh, are claiming. Okay. Um, uh, the Ontario Ministry of Energy and Ministry of Infrastructure uh, produced a projection uh, last year that said uh, over the next five years residential electricity prices are expected to rise by 7.9% annually or 46% over the next five years. Uh, and more than half of those prices, by their, by their calculations, uh, are for the cost of renewable energy production. 
As I look through their categories, I think they've missed a couple of categories. I think it's probably more than 56%, but that's what their projections say. There's an energy consulting uh, organization, Agen Energy Advisors. They produced some predictions uh, in August of 2010. And so they predict a 5.4 cent per kilowatt hour increase in residential rates by 2015. And that's compared to the base now of 5.5, 6.5, 7.5. And they uh, attribute uh, at least half uh, of the uh, uh, cost for increased electricity to the feed-in tariff program uh, all by itself. Question for economists, uh, do infant industries ever grow up? Uh, and the general experience uh, in economic research is that no, the kids never leave home. Uh, if, uh, if you provide this, uh, this uh, sheltered, comfortable environment and guarantee them uh, three hots and a cot, uh, in, the, in the domestic sense, but uh, guarantee the prices and guarantee the profits that they never really want to go out into the real world. Uh, the Danish experience suggests that's true, the Spanish experience suggests that's true, and I think that the hopes of selling technology in the U.S. market, uh, at least in the medium term, are not particularly uh, right. This hasn't come up yet as a policy conflict. All the policy conflict that I've talked about is kind of community-based local controversy in Ontario. Uh, but it seems to me that there is opportunity for trade disputes and interprovincial, uh, both interprovincial and then cross-border trade with the United States. Uh, what happens if somebody built a wind farm in Michigan and wants to sell electricity into the Ontario grid at the feed-in tariff uh, under the NAFTA? I'm not sure that, uh, that uh, Ontario Power Generation can say no to that, but I know they want to say no, uh, and I don't want to see that food fight uh, happen. So uh, what needs to be done, and several of you, uh, your questions were sort of along this, uh, this line, and it's almost like I could uh, read your minds before you said them. Um, well, I think one of the things that we need to seriously think about is to restore autonomy back to rural communities to make approval decisions. Uh, that was taken away in 2009, and I think a lot of people in rural Ontario uh, feel quite uh, disenfranchised and are going to be quite unhappy with anything that happens on renewable energy uh, until that, uh, that happens. Uh, I think we can continue to pursue better integration of the North American electrical uh, production and consumption systems, uh, particularly as a means of supply risk mitigation. We were moving in that direction quite aggressively until the great blackout a few years ago, uh, and then that kind of uh, put a wrinkle on that, uh, but, uh, but I think it was, it was a trend that was going in the right direction simply because the better integrated the system is, the more reliable it is, the better surplus and deficit areas can help one another out. Uh, I think it's time to rethink the decommissioning of coal plants decision, and several people came up and we had quite an animated discussion about that during the break. Uh, there are two things uh, that I think are uh, uh, assets uh, or attractive about uh, coal plants. Uh, one is that it's about the least costly uh, electricity production system that we have and facing these cost increases and potential price increases over the next few years. I think that's a consideration. The second thing is that coal plants are the most variable source of electricity that we have, uh, more, much more variable than nuclear and much more reliable than wind. Uh, and so they're variable in a good way that they can respond to peak demand uh, in a way that uh, other uh, uh, aspects of the system can. And then I mentioned uh, my colleague in the economics department, Ross McKittrick at Guelph, uh, has done some really important work uh, really ob looking objectively at the uh, emission performance of coal plants and concluded that, that maybe coal plants have an undeserved and overly negative reputation in Ontario in terms of their effects on, uh, uh, on air, uh, air quality.